Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is The Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Joy. And here's her story. Hi, Ollie. Thanks for all you do. Your channel and subscriber comments have helped me so much since I stumbled across a Narcissistic Mother article 18 months ago. I'm Joy, an adopted only pet from the UK. Narczilla and her mother, the grand monster who lived with us, were extremely verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive tag team when I was alone with them. Adopted at six weeks, they should have got a walkie-talkie dress-up doll to show off the company. It was made clear in words and actions I was defective and returnable at any time. Made to bow down over every tiny thing to do the exact to do the equally toxic golden child cousins carried over to be mercilessly bullied through school. I was very lucky to have my dad, a kind, gentle, quiet man who worked long hours. He always stood up for me on the rare occasions when what I call Narzilla's dad's home mass slipped a little. Since he died in 96, I've been increasingly low contact in gray rock with Narzilla, now 94 no contact for almost a year. In 99, I got a job in what turned out to be a snake pit. I'm married, ignored a pass the Indian boss made. Oh, I'm married, ignored a pass the Indian boss made. The mobbing by his male family members and other flying monkey co-workers was insidious psychological torture. The smear campaign was spread far and wide in in a small black water town that thrives on gossip. The lies still circulate even now I've gradually self-isolated. I am not diagnosed, but I have symptoms of CPTSD. Have never had a clear sense of or if or when I am right to even attempt to stand up for myself. You're ne it's n I understand something with, with the narcissist. It's never the right time to stand up for yourself. You're never right to stand up for yourself with them. Never. My default setting is freeze and shut up. On the very rare occasions I do lose my temper, I have to be furious and have a full-blown fight response. One exception, directly attacked by family and all bets are off. My problem for the last five and a half years is my coworker. I'm employed by the county council as a passenger assistant on a minibus for special needs schools. It's a rural area, so each trip can take two and a half hours, morning and afternoon. The kids have a range of disabilities and comprehension from nearing average to severely impaired. They face enough challenges without sniper fire and a bad atmosphere traveling to and from school. The limits how I reply or react to the driver. This limits how I reply or react to the driver. He started work in early 2012, seemed helpful, friendly, and very chatty about his life and family. Interested in my husband and adult kids, the same ages as our own. Their careers, education, hobbies, etc. Where we had lived on my husband's army postings. My birth mother and half-siblings who I met in 01, all facts I'm open about. A couple of days in the BS story and, and the BS story started. Like a rabbit caught in the headlights, I'd be dumbstruck. Why did he think I'd believe this crap? For example, his best mate, a multimillionaire who lives a 160 mile round trip away, picked him up and later dropped him home in his private helicopter to fix a washing, washing machine. There are dozens more, including the one about a friend about friend A that he had much later retold about friend B. I'm laughing my ass off remembering some of them. Then the backhanded compliments and little digs began. Ambiguous at first, couldn't be sure I'd be heard right from the back of the bus with the kids chattering. About a month in, he showed his true colors. One morning, a week or so after it had come up, that my birth grandfather was a World War II GI. I was almost comatose listening to another lengthy bull BS story about his close friend who works in the States for NASA. He led into, a, he led into an attack. <clears throat> he hates Yanks. They're all wankers. Cowards who turned up late for World War II. 
Startled, I told him he was being offensive. He talked over me. He said he was offending me personally. He just kept talking with the same smug, smirky smile and gleam in his eye I've seen so often in Narkzilla's face. I was angry now, and this went on another minute or so, ready to explode. I took a breath to rip him a new one right as he pulled up at our first pickup. Silence, the parents and child would appear at any moment. I'm mad enough to spit bullets and have an expression on my face. No longer, he looked right at me, shut up and lost the smirk. I think he suddenly realized he was a split second from getting his ass kicked. Since then, he belittles and insults indirectly with plausible deniability. The smallest piece of good news my family have. He waits, he waits days or a week or two. Then he casually chats. He read about someone told him or heard that his son or daughter is blah blah. Anything that has the slightest relevance or compassion that rips to shreds or totally eclipses. He's always been much more cautious about my husband who says that's probably because he knows where to find him. My kids live hours away. <clears throat> I know when it's deliberate and when it's not just his thought or opinion. He has tells, his expression, a tone of voice, a way of speaking, his eyes full of malicious amusement reflected in the rearview mirror, checking me over and over, watching for a reaction. If I change seat out of view within a day, he adjusts the mirror. Gray rock him long enough, he'll ask direct questions that require some level of answer. That gives him an opening to ask more, or he keeps prying from different angles. He spent a couple of years trying in every way possible to find out what my husband earns and what his army pension's worth. Snoops my phone when in his sight and asks what I'm looking at. Get a notification, he'll ask if I checked it, just in case I forgot as a way to then ask what it is. I can't turn the ringer off in case it's apparent. I started saying it's not work-related and to cut him off from asking. There's no such thing as casual chat or safe topic. Nothing he won't twist into some kind of one-up or put down a contradi or contradiction. Weeks, months, years later, he will use the slightest opportunity to retarget anything, no matter how small. <clears throat> Even the British obsession with the weather, the morning TV forecast I watched five minutes earlier, isn't what he heard or doesn't look like what it will be. Or later that day, he'll say, as if I'm personally responsible, that he, if he'd gone out when I said when, when I said it would be dry, cold, hot, whatever, he would have gotten soaked, sweaty, or frozen. I stopped mentioning it. He started asking what the forecast was. I never admit to watching it now. My husband got a new drill. When I didn't know what to make, he was visibly put out. Was it this or that brand? They're all crap. He only has the, he only has the top make, four of them. I love my car, a low mileage automatic 2007, 2007 Chrysler PT Cruiser. Passed my test with a manual car while we were on an army posting in Cyprus. A few random opportunity highlights from the last five years. Automatics are for people who simply aren't capable of learning to drive. Here's what I want to know. Why are you absorbing everything who's not some guy who's not your husband? I mean, it almost sounds like you, 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 you want the fight with this guy. Automatics are for people who simply aren't capable of learning to drive properly. Drivers who earn, who learn in other countries, can't possibly be competent to, to drive here, and should be forced to take a proper UK test. He never had a car more than a couple years old. There are death traps. He's a great mechanic, fixes his old cars himself. Of course, he always buys British. He's had three Chryslers in the UK. My son is a successful international performer in the vaudeville freak show Burlesque World. His acts include fire, broken glass, and bell, bed of nails. 
The Burlesque Hall of Fame Las Vegas used a video of his ballet-inspired fan striptease as a how-to-do-it-right role model for male students. Audience members do not expect to paw tip, get a lap dance, or extras from the artists. It's relevant that my son is also gay. This was another one way to pick up... This was another one on the way to the first pickup of the morning. There is never any point in telling him he's off beam. It spurs him on, makes him more smug and smirky. After all, he's only telling me he watched a documentary about a wannabe male stripper. Thinking, what the fuck, I must have made an involuntary Scooby-Doo-like, huh? He quickly followed up with a hilarious five-minute over-explanation. He mistook, he mistook the title for something else to justify why he watched a probably, a probably non-existent show right to the end. Once he convinced himself that he convinced me he didn't have any gay inclinations, but has never had a problem with anyone who is. He even had a gay friend once. He got his aim back on target. The guy in the show was almost was almost destitute, couldn't make any money, lived off tips and male prostitution, was treated like a piece of meat on display in a butcher's window, clearly would never be good enough to get in the Chippendales, could only get a third-rate strip, stripogram work or ladies' night in a dirty back, back street pubs. It was all sleazy, sordid, and disgusting. These examples are a drop in the ocean. They just keep coming. Day after day, it never stops. I couldn't cope with the regular school breaks. 99% of the time, I couldn't care less about what he actually says. It's, then why are you remembering every word of what he says with such detail? You do care about what he says because you're remembering all of it and you're letting him get under your skin. It's the drip, drip, drip waiting for the next veiled snipe, knowing what he's doing, that, that he knows I know and I can't do a thing about it. Why? why? Why can't you? You're working on a school bus. Look, service jobs like that, and especially working with the de disabled, the, it, it, it's their magnets for narcissistic behavior because you can get away with shit. Did you complain to anybody? Did you say, get me on a different bus? Shut this guy up. He's unprofessional. It's unsafe to be talking on a school bus with disabled children. Like, when are you having these arguments when you got a bus full of disabled children? Question him or call him out. He'll be extra spiteful shortly after and name drop our managers in the council office. He says one manager is his sister-in-law's best friend, another is an old school friend. Implies very friendly, out-of-work relationships with regular references. We rarely see office staff or speak to them unless there is info to pass on a problem, but there is no help for you there. Our sense of menace isn't lost on me. The short time we need to spend at school, he extends by hanging around in the morning and arriving in the afternoon. He sucks up, pot stirs, gossip, data mines, and triangulates. Other drivers, passenger assistants, and especially school staff. He's such good friends with them. First he name drops the head of every opportunity. I've overheard him quoting me and complaining and, or, and some, about something that he's been bitching about me. Randomly different people have been clearly off, frosty or abrupt with me for varying periods of time for no, reason, for no reason I know of. Several months ago during spring break, he ran me, smug that he had a meeting at the office. D smug about what? I mean, you guys are driving on a school bus here. I mean, this is going on and on, and this is, you know... Everything you're 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 just absorbing everything he throws at you. Everything he throws at you, and you're then. This is what happens. I notice with adopted narcissistic pets. If you, they have this writing style where again they're scripting their life. Everything about them needs to be in this scripted format, and overtold and overexplained. 
if this is what you're doing around your coworkers, over explaining everything like this, this is the problem. Because people are going to be like, this. she just doesn't, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. I didn't know about the problem with the bus. I didn't. Why would they contact him personally and not even bother to ring me? Maybe because you drive the bus. Bottom line, we couldn't use the school zone bus after a certain date, plus a lot of detail I'll skip over. What he explained was to happen was a word salad of what they said. She won't, we will, and on and on. And something that didn't tally with previous experience I'd had in 13 years in the job. A couple of key points he was crystal clear and adamant was he told he would cause me maximum inconvenience and stress that implied if we didn't go along with the plan he'd be made redundant or simply fired. I rang the office, said I wasn't sure what was going on. His, his school friend ran into me through the details. Seemed puzzled why I hadn't understood A, thought B, and didn't know X, Y, Z. And I got to unravel the manipulation, omissions, and gaslighting. Only, only downside is she probably thinks I'm more challenged than the kids I work with. On the first day back to school, I hadn't decided if I'd listen, if I'd just listen to see how far he takes the BS. Or tell him I rang the office and blow his game out of the water. At first he inflated his role in the decision making. Name dropped and hinted at the office insider knowledge. He then couldn't tell me. Yeah, he's a gossip. Like explaining every incident of gossip here, Joy. This is your problem. You explain every incident you can think of in the great. I, all I needed was one story here. I would have gotten it, but this keeps happening over and over and over. You are writing, you're living your life inside of some kind of novel where you are writing yourself in a novel and you're not living your life. Because you've been scripting your life because you've been afraid of being thrown away since you were a child. This has to stop. This is your problem in interacting with other people because you are over explaining everything and it's just like it gets it's like i get it enough but i have a feeling you can't you can't let off the let off the gas pedal again because again your government workers and you guys are driving disabled children on a school bus this is just ridiculous for the amount the uh, for what you guys are act do and what's going on here it's it's ridiculous what's going on ridiculous at first he inflated his role in the decision making why do you care though like who cares you know he's a big show off who cares Name dropped and hinted at the office insider knowledge he couldn't tell me. Gossiped about another office manager who was sick. By the time he got the actual bus-related BS, he'd, he'd spun me. I'd had enough. Simply said, that isn't what your old school friend told me when I rang the office myself. He got quiet, pulled himself together enough to find out just how much I knew, which was all of it. Then he went completely silent. 15 minutes went by and he suddenly said, guess who else is great friends with my sister-in-law? Yet another manager. I said, so what? You just got through telling me she's about to lose her job. She's been off sick so long. The smirk vanished and he barely spoke the rest of the trip. Two weeks later, when, when the part I skipped hadn't panned out and they, and they hadn't found a replacement vehicle, With just a couple days notice, a local company started driving me on my route, just as my previous experience years before. The driver was temporarily out regular with, without regular work. On standby to cover sickness or absence, the other route, route, routes as needed. On full pay, 
only until suitable bus was found ASAP. The first day, a guy from another bus route rushed over to ask how the driver was, saying, poor guy being put out of a job that way, confused for a moment. I said, no, he's not, and explained what was happening. Two minutes later, a school staff member said they needed a con they needed the contact of the driver. A caretaker job at another school was being advertised. Poor guy being out of work like that. So I explained the situation again and told the driver, and I'm told the driver asked the senior admin if the school had any caretaker hours available and it spun her a sob story. The staff member was pretty shocked now he knew they'd been lied to by someone and they all thought he was such a great guy. It felt weird after five years of keeping quiet knowing no one would believe me to be able to say to him that the driver pulls stuff like this all the time. He paused for a second and said, and said, then said, that must do your head in. My temporary driver who had had a route to school the same sometime before a couple weeks later, he asked me something the driver had said was true. When I replied, he, he isn't always 100% accurate. The guy laughed and said, oh, I knew he was lying a few times. That was two months ago. It was five weeks before the new bus was available. My psoriasis and insomnia improved drastically. I stopped waking up hours before my 5 a.m. 5.45 a.m. alarm. School and bus routes staff are much more friendly. I wasn't anxious and on edge the whole time I was working. It was great. The new bus arrived three and a half weeks ago. He knows he lost a lot of control and is desperately trying to get it back. He knows something happened. It's fishing for who, what, and when. Says the, says the staff member I had the conversation with that blew this guy good image this is his good good guy says the staff member i had the conversation with that blew his good guy image isn't as friendly with him since we no longer use the school zone bus this also means he no longer has a reason to hang around school the new bus is parked at the council's office but he doesn't get to see the office staff regularly without reason he can't get past the main reset you are just explaining way too much here this is just way too much he's been given the lease company number for the vehicle servicing repairs which cuts off another excuse to speak to his office staff even further. He started back the same week our annual work forms needed to be handed in prior to review meetings. We are rarely offered one anyway. He hijacked my last meeting. My appointment was a half hour before his. He was already there when I arrived, said he couldn't remember which one of us was first. Predictably, the manager, the one who was off sick, said, great, you're both here. I can kill two birds with one stone. <clears throat> when she began asking him vehicle spe specific questions, there was no reason for me to stay. He amped up the management. Well, he amped up on the my management friends threat after that too. By day three of his return, my husband was sick of the driver situation. Said if I didn't do something about it, he would. Panicked, I added to the review form under notable achievements because you're probably going home driving your husband crazy with story after story after story after story with this i guarantee you you're holding your husband hostage with this nonsense and i'm telling you this is silly nonsense this is silly nonsense Not having a full-blown argument with the driver over his frequent, sly, passive-aggressive, and insulting comments about myself and adult children. Not reacting to his covert manipulation of myself, bus, and school staff. I have not mentioned this previously due to his regular references to his personal friendships with senior office staff. The staff had always dealt with me in a professional manner. I handed it in almost three weeks ago. The driver was the same as usual that afternoon. We finish after office hours at 6.30 the next morning, a Friday, he was extremely quiet. Was quiet for him all next week. I heard nothing back. Had no clue if he'd been spoken to or given a heads up by one of the friends. 
Ten days later, the first thing on Monday morning, out of the blue, he asked if I'd heard anything since handing in my review form. He tells me we're all there. Wary, I say, no, why? Oh, I just thought you might have had a phone call or a meeting. I just said I didn't think there were any meetings scheduled yet. No one else has ever mentioned we'd had the forms. Oh, I just thought you might have heard something. I spent the next few days hoping we'd get appointments soon. Knew if we didn't, he'd take it as a green light. He has. He barely tries to disguise his comments. He's getting more in my face every day. I refuse to lose my temper after this long. Probably he wants I would play right into his hands. I have started to call him out as firmly, but as reasonably as I can with a bus full of kids. This needs to stop. Look, you are retaining too much information with that. I mean, it's everything that happens is being spit right back, and I'm sure this is coming out in your day-to-day -day personality. I know he'll have planted the seeds of a smear campaign long ago. School staff have been more friendly and chatty this last week. He may have tried it, failed. They know what, he re what he's really like. The office situation is a different matter. I was worried when I handed the foreman about a smear campaign and however was I going to explain this stuff to normal people without sounding like a crazy whiny bitch. It isn't even about the job itself or health or safety. Discrimination. I'm not in a minority group. I'm not sure about working conditions. Escalating it to a complaint is terrifying. I need my job. I used to like it. At 56, I aged out of the UK job market, would struggle to find another. Any advice would be appreciated. Thanks again for all you do. I can't imagine how hard it is to read some of the stories. Best to you and Charlene, the kiddies in the community. Joy. Well, look, Joy. This shouldn't be happening on when, when, you, when you're working around kids because it's dangerous. Okay, but because of how you were raised, okay, you are, again, another person who's not living their life. You're writing your life as it's some kind of some kind of script or novel. Okay? You, again, are over-explaining everything. This could have been cut down a lot. And if this is what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, people are going to shut down. You need to be to the quick and to the point. Now, I understand you're 56, and I understand more than anybody what the job market is like. But... <clears throat> If your your husband's already at the point where he's like, you better fix this or I will, he's tired of hearing about it. He's tired of hearing about it. And I'm being very honest with you here. He's tired of hearing about this. This is like an assault on his ears. He feels bullied by all this shit. That he has to listen to it over and over and over. And I'm sure in the back of his mind, it's like these are two adults taking care of children on a school bus. When you boil it down like that, it might sound a little harsh, but I'm, I'm trying to wake you up here. Okay? This is the protections you get of working in a government job. Okay, this is just government workers. This is what it's like working in a government job or a large corporation. People are fucked up. And these type of jobs, working with the needy and working with children and working in government, they're targets for narcissists. They, they flock there. But for you to sit there and just absorb the narcissist bullshit like a sponge... Stop it. It's what he wants. He wants you walking around carrying all this shit, going home and dumping all this shit on your husband, driving him insane to the point of you better fix it or I will. So stop being the narcissist sponge. 
Either you're going to have to put your big girl pants on and decide, you know what, I can't take this motherfucker anymore. I'm going to make a complaint because that's the only way out of it. Or find another job. Okay? Or I'm going to have to learn how to deal with it and not come home and absorb all this shit and stop being the narcissist sponge. So, I hope that helps. I really do. Thank you for your contribution and your story. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to help it succeed, expand, and keep growing because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.